Okay, we're going to talk about stones, bile duct stones. But I just want to start by talking about colonoscopy. A couple of uh, polyps here. This is a five millimeter polyp, tiny little thing. This is a huge eight centimeter uh, lesion. Let's say it's in the cecum. Now, as a colonoscopist, do you consider both these patients the same? They're going to be on the same list. You're going to be using the same kit. You're going to consent the patient with the same probability of success and complication for this lesion as this lesion. Well, the answer is no, you're not. But I would suggest that many people do exactly that when it comes to stones. Um, we say the patient's got a bile duct stone. You need an ERCP. We're going to try and get the stone out. And yet there are particular situations and particular scenarios in which your chance of removing that stone um, is dramatically reduced uh, using only conventional ERCP. So what are those scenarios? OK, well, the first thing is stone size. All right. Now, traditionally, we've said that a stone, let's say, uh, within the bile duct of um, greater than... Uh, well, certainly 15 millimetres, some people might even say greater than 10 millimetres, uh, is a difficult stone. OK, but the but actually the most important uh, equation is the diameter of the stone relative to the diameter of the duct below the stone. All right. So if you have a big 20 millimetre stone, but within an enormous baggy um, 25 millimeter bile duct actually with sphincterotomy with large balloon sphincteroplasty uh, this stone removal might be straightforward um, with uh, balloon extraction after sphincteroplasty on the other hand the patient who has a nine millimeter stone above a narrowed lower bile duct this stone will be extremely difficult to remove um, uh, through conventional uh, techniques um, and so the ratio of the stone diameter to the lower duct diameter is a crucial um, calculation that we need to make um, uh, next stones in unusual positions um, uh, stones in the cystic duct are characteristically difficult to remove with conventional ERCP. It can actually be very difficult to uh, make that assessment at the time of um, uh, an ERCP. And it's often a very careful look at the MRCP that may allow the radiologist and you to decide, actually, this stone is not within the bile duct. It is at least partially uh, within the origin of the cystic duct. Um, and certainly in our practice, we find that one can have a very high level of success for stone removal in these patients uh, using spyglass cholangioscopy. Um, we recently had a patient who had had 13 conventional ERCPs in attempting to remove a stone from the mid bile duct. In fact, the stone was in the origin of the cystic duct and it was one short session of cholangioscopy and electrohydraulic lithotripsy that allowed us to remove the stone. Um, what about the intrahepatic ducts? Yes. Um, uh, the more peripheral a stone, um, the, the harder it can be re uh, to remove. And certainly a stone in this position, very difficult to remove via conventional ERCP. Um, and we spend a lot of time in our specialist multidisciplinary meeting uh, uh, looking at patients referred in with this sort of anatomy, deciding whether um, the stones in this area are clinically relevant but re because recognising that even if we can get round with cholangioscopy, complete clearance of stones in this region or, for example, out in the periphery uh, of the left duct um, uh, may be very challenging to remove those stones and may not impact significantly on the patient's uh, uh, clinical position. Um, so uh, occasionally we see patients with multiple bile duct stones actually um, the, the same rules apply as applies here, that, you, that 
however many stones you have, if the lower duct um, is favourable, one can often clear the most distal stone, and as long as we remove the stones one at a time, conventionally RCP may be um, uh, feasible in that uh, case. But as a take-home message, we should be thinking very carefully before we do any ERCP for a patient with bile duct stones, and we should answer the question, can I consent this patient for a high chance of complete stone clearance with conventional ERCP? If not, um, should I be referring this patient on or elsewhere for um, uh, additional techniques such as cholangioscopy? Is it enough at this first procedure just to decompress the duct? It may be if the patient is severely cholangitic. Um, but what are the particular characteristics of this stone that mean that conventionally RCP is going to be a, a real challenge? And to summarise, they may be absolute stone size, position of the stone, particularly uh, in the cystic duct or the intrapatic ducts. Very importantly, the relationship between stone size and the lower duct, in particular if there is a narrowing or stricture of the lower duct, and perhaps also multiple bile duct stones. So if you, we follow those rules, and even before we embark on an ERCP, really consider those factors, we won't go too far wrong.